Tonight on Chim's Talk Africa, my guest is Patrick Aja, the MD and CEO of Mayam Baker in Nigeria, one of the leading pharmaceutical companies in Africa. Tonight, Patrick shares the story of coming from rags to a place of influence today in the corporate world. Tonight on Chimstock Africa. Before we do that, please like this video and leave a comment below. Let us know what you think. And don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell button and share this video with somebody. From Cape Town to Cairo and from Mogadishu to Dakar, this is Chim's Talk Africa. And now here's your host, Chim Onyibilanma. Hi there, welcome to this week's episode of your show. I can't wait for you to go into this interview I had with Patrick Aja, the CEO of Mayam Baker in Nigeria. One of the reasons why I want to share this interview is just how inspiring it is to watch a life like this of faithfulness to God. Patrick gave his life to Christ as a, as a young man. And over the years, he, despite his circumstances, he abandoned everything to Christ. And to watch the faithfulness of God in his life over the years to where God has taken him today. There's so much to learn from this interview. Let's go to that interview now. Hi there, and welcome to this segment of your show. Like I said in the introduction, my guest today is Mr. Patrick Aja. He's the MD and CEO of May and Baker, one of the top pharmaceutical companies, not only in Nigeria, but around Africa in the world. Patrick, you're welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Now, Patrick, what I want to start with is that here you are at this stage of your life, leading a leading company, a pharmaceutical company like May and Baker. If you go back to Patrick 40 years ago, what was the dream? What was it like? Did you, was this what you were gunning for? Or is this something God told you? Well, um, okay, so I probably wasn't gunning for um, this 40 year, 40 something years ago, because probably 40 something years ago, my dream was at least to be able to go to the university. Okay. And uh, my peculiar situation was such that each time, a, a different, right from when I was very small, I had a lot of um, disruptions mm. with my quest to be educated. So it wasn't a given that you no, were going to it university? Wasn't. It was In fact, it looked like each time I got interested in going to school, something happens mm. and I get pulled out mm. of school. I, I guess probably when I was um, maybe six, there was no money to pay school fees for me again. Mm. I was in primary two. Just when I started liking school, because the first time I got into school, I was too small. You know, they make you cross your hand yeah, if your hand to doesn't see your touch. Age, you know, if you're so, ready for so, school. so my hand mm. couldn't touch. Mm. So I wasn't supposed to be in school, but there was nothing to be doing at mm. home. So they just let me to draw things. I, I could draw very well. I didn't understand what they were doing. I could draw. But gradually, I started liking school, and then there was no money to pay my school fees, so I had to be pulled out of school. And I spent almost two years out of school, and I really was feeling very bad. And, and I said this, uh, this, this, this is very, very passionate about me, what I'm going to say now. Mm. Because of my interest in going back to school, some of my mates whom I would have started school before mm. had eventually gone to school, and me, I was back home wishing I could go back to school. It was breaking my mother's mm. heart. And I, I will never forget this. Mm. My mother took her cloth. My mother took her cloth, her best cloth, mm. deposited to borrow money mm. to send me back mm. to school. Mm. Uh, you see, I was coming in the second term because I had missed first term. I was coming in the second term, but she couldn't bear anymore me staying at home. She took her cloth deposited her cloth to borrow money mm. to pay school fees mm. for me and my older brother mm. to get back to mm. school. I will never forget mm. it. And I think some of those things defined who I became today. 
because after that experience, obviously I went ahead to finish primary school, went into secondary school. Then when I was um, um, class five in the secondary school, mm. my brother, my older, um, older brother who uh, obviously also couldn't continue mm. in school. Because of the same struggle. Because of the same struggle, because in his um, standard six then, there was no money. He just managed to finish standard six and had to go. So he himself, because he was very intelligent back in school, mm. so he was wishing that some of us should go to school. Mm. And he was preparing to make sure that I went to the university. Mm. But just when I was to finish um, secondary school again, his business went bad. It was an attack from every side. Yeah. So you see, each time I want to move ahead in my Quest academics, education. something happens. Mm. When I went to, to secondary school, obviously, mm. um, yes, you, you knew how to obey uh, what you're taught in church, mm. not to do things other mm. kids mm. did. But I won't say that I knew what it meant to be born again. Yeah. When I went to secondary school, my master in secondary mm. school was of Assemblies of God. Mm. And he liked me a lot. Mm. And he was like a mentor to me. And I respected him so much. So because of that, I had to sort of follow mm. his lead. Mm. And I joined Scripture Union. Mm. So I must give credit to Scripture Union wow. for helping me to know God. Mm. So, so I, I guess I, I, I got to know God very early, mm. probably about 13 years mm. or so. Looking back, at the foundations you had then, what, what are the things you see? What are the blocks you see from them that has held you over the years? I mean, you've talked about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but let's talk about lessons you learned there or, or principles you learned in those early stage. Let's say the first 10 years after you gave your life to Christ that you look back and you say, look, those things in the early 80s and now these are the blocks that has stayed with me all this while. Okay, so you, you can't rule out the uh, impact of mentors yeah. in Christianity. Mm. You know, people who help you along the way. So for, for somebody like me, a mother who loved God yeah. was a beginning part. So there are already things that my mates were doing, which I couldn't do mm. because my mother wouldn't like it. Mm. For instance, I mean, back when we were entering secondary school, it was an opportunity to go for disco and all those kinds of stuff. I have girlfriend write love letters. And for somebody like me that had a fantastic handwriting, I could speak good English. I mean, you, you know. Those handwritings were good for love oh, yeah. letters. So, so such things, you know. But, but the first couldn't. day I mentioned that um, my cousin went for disco my mother didn't like it and that's why i never went for disco because you saw the you yeah. saw her response to yeah it. so she didn't like it so now getting into scripture union you knew that such things were not, not allowed it's part of your work you know? with Christ. so so mm. those were very very important so having done that but but i guess the moment they explained to me about um you know um being filled with the Holy Spirit yeah. and all of yeah. that, joining this catch-up and all of mm. that where you, you know, so I got filled with the Holy mm. Spirit. And that was a significant part mm. because now I've got bolder. Mm. I can preach a lot more mm. to people mm. and all of that. And I understood exactly what it meant to give your life to Christ. Jesus and to live for him mm. in school, mm. be a good example. Mm. And of course, got involved in scripture union, mm. you know, leadership positions okay, and all of, of that. Yes, yeah. of course. So, so much of my youth life mm. was spent in God. Yeah. So, so I, I never quite had most of those things that young people did go to discos, have boyfriends or girlfriends and all of that because my master was not mm. going to like it and mm. all those kinds of things. You were, and safe, now, you were safe from yeah, that I was, I was. You know, scripture union wasn't going to like it and all mm. of that. Mm. So, so I think all of those were very mm. good. Then, uh, obviously, once you've done that for some time, you get more grounded. Mm. You become the one that is going out to preach. Mm. So you can't do the things that you mm. were preaching mm. to people not to do. Mm. So I really must. And, and I think it was very helpful for me mm. because with the experiences I had, with the challenges I had, mm. you finish secondary school, 
you were intelligent, so to say, yeah. but there was no money to go yeah. further because immediately I finished secondary school, my brother that was planning to send me to the mm. university, the wife got sick, mm. his business sort of mm. scattered, so I couldn't go to the university mm. immediately. Then I went to Abba to wait a while to see if money will come out. But in that process, that was when I joined the Assemblies of God mm. Church. So from Scripture Union through school, I left, I joined the Assemblies of God Church, and we had a zeal for God. Mm. Myself and three other friends of mine from our church then, uh, because of involvement in things like um, uh, young businessmen, just, mm. a, just yeah. a little arm of full gospel yeah, okay. kind of thing, you know, we really got into sort of serious evangelism. Yes. So we formed a small uh, kind of um, group. We used to call ourselves uh, the Reaping Heralds. Okay. There were four of us. Uh, we called ourselves the Reaping Heralds. We were a member of a fellowship in Abad that was called the Young Reapers Club. Mm. So in our church, four of us in our church, we called ourselves the Reaping Heralds. And part of what we were doing was every night, Monday, um, there will be service on Sunday. Monday evening, we go to church to prepare, to pray. We used to call it refueling. Mm. So we'll pray, we'll pray quite, spend some time praying mm. to prepare for evangelism mm. for the rest of the week. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, mm. after church activities, we would have selected some of our friends who were not born again, mm. and four of us will storm their house. Wow. Boldly approach the parents that will have come to, to speak to them. To present Christ to them. And we'll, sometimes the parents will relinquish their sitting room to us and will preach. Wow. To the extent that, of course, many people gave their lives. Mm. Along the line, some of our friends started being afraid when they see us, they run away. <laughs> But, but, but I think that was a significant part mm. of our lives. Mm. So we obviously started ministry. Mm. When there was no university to go to, mm. we enrolled in God's mm. school. God's school of, of evangelism. Reaping. Yeah, yeah, reaping for people. And it was significant. It was significant. You know, we're doing quite a lot. People were inviting us to come and talk to their friends. Their, in fact, parents were now sending for us to come and talk Help to their, with children, their children who were misbehaving wow. and all of that. And we were challenging quite a number of people in church. So then we'll sit in church. Um, if we see visitors in church who probably do not know God, we'll take their names and we'll visit them and we'll follow them up. We were reaping for God. Wow. And you see, I like to tell young people that there is nothing you do for God that is lost. Mm. For me, I, I, this, this is what has defined my life. So much of those things we did, I believe God was watching, God was recording, God was preparing us mm. for where we were going to go. So we did that for quite a while. And um, because there was still no money, you know, I finished secondary school 1984. Mm. So there was no money. I stayed home 85. I couldn't just be staying idle. My brothers, they were sewing bags and selling. He didn't want me to join it because he still believed that somebody should go, go to the to university. School, if not him, yeah. somebody else. So, but I taught myself to sew. Mm. I taught myself when they left, I looked at the bag they were sewing. I learned to sew it myself. So when he came, he was surprised. Who made this? I said, I did. Say, how? I said, I've been seeing you guys, so I learned it. So that's how I started helping to sew bags. So I saw back in the day, in the evening, we were in church mm. or going around reaping. Mm. So um, along the line, 1986, uh, a friend of mine, we were in secondary school together, visited, and my brother was talking to him while I was in church and asked him, how much do you pay in school? Mm. So my friend told him, he said, ah, I thought it was a lot more than that. He said, if I knew it was this amount, my brother should have gone to the university Please. by now. So when I came back, he wanted me to uh, enroll. go enroll. So I, I wrote Jamba again, got admission in 1986. Unfortunately, just when I was about to start, things scattered again, and I couldn't What, what happened this time around? Yeah, I mean, um, <laughs> his wife- I'm my, just interested because yeah. it seems every time you take no, a yeah, step- so That's why I say each time I got 
serious about going to school. Something Advancing, happens, something happens. You know. So what happened this time around? So I had gotten an admission to Uniport. But just when I was about to go, my brother's wife um, had some this problem. That, okay. You know, so each time uh, it starts, most of the time when mm. she delivers, mm. it starts. And each time it starts, it seems my brother's business cuts it goes off. down and it's difficult for him. Yeah. So mm. that was what happened again. And things really got tough. So you had to delay? Yeah, I had to delay again. But it was also an opportunity to go back working for God. So mm. we got back into ministry. Fortunately, some of my friends also uh, had also not gone to school. Mm. Some of them are also having financial mm. challenges mm. and waiting on God. But as God will have it, by 1988, mm. um, I won't say the details, but in 1987, I could see God leading me. Mm. I could see a whole lot of things happening, mm. and God really opened a door, mm. and business started changing. Mm. And in 1988, I had to enter the university. Praise God. You know. You broke through that door. Yeah, yeah. But again, I think that um, that experience I had, that period, mm. was a preparation. Yeah. Because... In the ministry that we had, we encountered a whole lot. Mm. We were doing a lot of deliverances mm. and all of that. Mm. So I really believe that that was an opportunity for God to prepare me to fight the mm. battle in my family. Mm. I believe it was mm. a battle in my family. Mm. And I fought that battle. Mm. I fought many battles. Mm. Incidentally, I was the one that used to handle deliverance mm. when we go for ministration. Mm. I was the one that when we destroy a shrine, mm. I pack it and put in a can and take it to my house to and say I was, I yeah. had a museum. Mm. So all of that taught me how to war. Mm. So in the night, in prayers, I war. I have fought pythons, mm. I have fought mm. giants and mm. all of that. Mm. God was preparing mm. me to fight the war mm. in my family. Mm. And the, the ministration I had was, mm. the things I went through, other people in my family were not going to go through it. Mm. And that was why I vowed that as God kept helping me, mm. money will never be a reason why mm. anybody in my family will not go to school. You, you rose through the rank through hard work and dedication to God oh, yeah. in, in, in the setting. And how have you managed to keep your faith? I ask this with everybody in the marketplace because uh, there are other climes, other parts of the world where you are not forced to... You know, in fact, it's integrity becomes a part of what you, but we know the reality. You, you know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That uh, it's sad to say, but the truth is that he that wants to live for the Lord faces some challenge because of the way we do things sometimes. Not necessarily the organization, but just the atmosphere. How have you managed to keep true to the Lord? What are the principles that you all, you could give us examples of how God has helped you. Okay, so already, um, already, I think the essence of being a Christian is first your responsibility to God. Yeah. Uh, once you understand that, once you understand that in every environment where you are, your first duty and responsibility is to, to God. God. When that is you, when you understand when it that. it sinks in, yeah. Yeah, almost every, you will be able to work in every organization. Wow. And part of it will be, if the organization is a straightforward organization, mm. they will love you. <laughs> if it's not a straightforward organization, they are not going to like you. Yeah. So chances are you may not stay long For there. Long. Or you'll be persecuted. That's it. So, but, but fortunately, pharmacy is also a very disciplined mm. profession. Mm. The kind of work we also do is guided by rules, especially when you work with multinational mm, companies. Mm. But I think that's also the place where your testimony needs to stand mm. out. Because frankly, if you are a salesman, there are opportunities to cheat. To cut corners. There are so many opportunities to cheat. Mm. To cheat the company, to cheat everybody. Mm. You know, because you're, you're, you have a whole lot of cash. You can falsify things, you can tell lies and all of that, but mm. that's where your Christianity needs to show. Your yes being a yes. Mm. Uh, chances are that sometimes you might not be making as much money as mm. other people, mm. but you're going to depend on yeah, God. Yeah, because you said on pleasing yeah, God. Yeah. You are responsible to yeah, God, so, like so, you said. So you're going to tell the mm. truth. You're mm. not going to 
tell a lie mm. to make even to if that work. even if that makes you money fast, mm. you're, you're not going to do it. So some people are just going to look at you and say, "Oh, you're not fast, you're not smart, and all of that." You're not smart, you know. <laughs> but at least one thing will speak for you. Mm. In the job that you do, mm. you will be the best. Yeah, you do it well. So that that has been my Enjoy. hallmark. My hallmark has always been that when it comes to this job that I've mm. chosen to do, mm. you can't beat me. Beat me. It doesn't matter what you are yeah, cutting home. Yeah, it doesn't matter what, what you're, you're showing making, off. Yeah. yeah, in all of that. Mm. But on the job. So on the job every month, when we, when we come, I'm going to be the best. Mm. I'm going to be the best. And they, when the ways of a man pleases the Lord, he makes a way. Mm. You can imagine, I was a rep at a time where we didn't have cell phones and all mm. of that, but the Holy Spirit speaks to me. Mm. The things that people were finding difficult to sell, mm. the Holy Spirit You're tells me how to way. sell. Mm. So meeting targets was never a problem for me. In fact, uh, my bosses, if they get a chance to listen to it, will know that the <laughs> things that are difficult to sell, tell Patrick, Patrick sells we'll it. So if, it I tell you, if I tell you to bring anything, you bring mm. it because it's going to sell. Mm. I may not be the richest among yes. the reps, but my hands are going to be straight. straight. You're not going to have issues. So I was the one that, um, you know, some people will owe company money. They start telling stories. Some, some even leave companies without paying the money. Mm. But that's where your Christianity Comes gets proven. In. And when that's your case, God helps you do some other things. Now you, you look back, how did it feel when you got appointed as the MDC of Mayan Baker? How, how did it feel? Because here's a child of God working with the Lord, having conversations with the Lord. How, how, did, it, how did it feel? But I believe that um, when it's God's time mm. and God sends you to a place, mm. look, I see every opportunity to work in any company as, mm. as a mission mm. field, as an assignment from yeah, God. Yeah. I, I see it as an assignment mm. from God. And I look forward to changes we could make, mm. both for the organization and for mm. the individuals. Mm. And I also like to say that sometimes if you're a child of God and you believe God is sending you mm. on an assignment, uh, you have to listen clearly mm. to what God wants you to do. So oh. do it. As we round up, you're still strong, you're still much in health. What's the vision you have for the future? And uh, I mean, personally, as you look forward and you've worked with God, God is speaking to you. What's the, I'm talking beyond me and Bacon. I'm talking about the man. Patrick, because this is all about the man, Patrick Aja, who has worked with the Lord Jesus all these decades, and there's still so many decades in front. What, what's born in your heart? What's, yeah. I, I believe that, and I've got to be honest, um, some of the questions I get asked, and, and they asked me when I was uh, doing this in, interview for my position, mm. some of the questions I get asked was, what do you do in your spare times? Mm. Um, and sometimes I'm bold to say, uh, I mean, I used to play football, I used to play table mm. tennis and all of that, but I'm bold to say that um, sometimes I, I'm not able to do some of those hobbies mm. because my, apart from my job, my second job is God's mm. church. Mm. Church. You know, I've worked a lot with young people. We mm. started teenagers' church mm. in my church. Yeah. I've worked, I mean, which, I've said which, it. Uh, which Assemblies of God? Assemblies yeah. of God, which Ikeja, one? just not okay, far away okay, from okay, here. Okay. You know, so I've worked a lot with young people. Mm. And right from the university, um, even after leaving university, I've supported them a lot. Mm. I still want to send a message mm. because the vision I had leaving the university was, I want to be an example of a young man who can rise to the top mm. without doing the wrong things. Wow. I want to show that it is possible to get to the zenith of your career and still be a good Christian. Mm, mm. And probably only my wife knows this. Before I got this job, um, a few months before I got this job, God told me you will be a preaching CEO. Mm. So probably I'm one of the few CEOs that is still functioning as an, as an evangelist. Yeah. 
Yeah. I've been an evangelist mm. for so many years. So right from that time. Yeah, no, I've been, an, I've been an evangelist. The, the my, yeah, my church knows me as an evangelist. Mm. So I, I do, I, 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 I preach when a lot when mm. I have time, mm. you know. So I'm still an evangelist. Mm. So mm. I still preach. So I these still. are the things that are still born in your oh, yeah. heart. Oh, yeah. You are speaking very wise words. We need to learn this. I would could listen to you till tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You have an inspiring story okay, and sir. you are filled with wisdom. Patrick, what's your last, last word? I want you to look into the camera and speak to that man, that woman. Some are dejected. Some people cry about, oh, there is no hope. Of course, your story enough is enough to tell us uh, where there is nothing. God is able to make something out yeah. of it. But what's yeah. your last word? Whatever is in your heart you've not said so far, look into the camera and say it. So, so I, I want to speak to every young person mm. that no matter what you're going through, I think the most important thing in life is to know God. Mm. When you know God, no matter where you are, where you are today does not define where you will be tomorrow. Mm. If you know God, there is nothing impossible for God to do. Amen. But just know God, hold on to him. There is God. Mm. And God can change anything. Look, there is nothing impossible for God to mm. do. No matter where you are. I mean, I've said it. I hawked things on the street. Mm. But you see, um, hawking things on the street didn't define who I was mm. going to be. Mm. So you can go from the street mm. and become the CEO of or possibly a bigger company mm. than the one I manage mm. now. Mm. Or hold on to God. Wow. When wow. you do that, um, wow. the rest is history. Wow, what a beautiful way to learn this. The fact that hold on to God, an intimate relationship with God, as it's played out so clearly in your own life. Thank you so much, Patrick, for sharing your story you. with us. Thank, Thank you, you so for much. the life you live. Thank you for the inspiration you are. Thank you for the light you continue to shine Thank in the you. places that Christ has placed you. May he continue to flourish Amen. in your life. Thank Amen. you so much for coming on the I show. I appreciate you. Thank you so God much. God bless you. Thanks. Please like this video and leave a comment below. Let's know what you think. And don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell button and share this video with somebody else.